heavenly greetings in Jesus' name. Thank you. You're so welcome. We're here on the University of God. And thank you for joining us in this Heart to Heart podcast. Heart to Heart with who? With God Almighty. Yeah, that's the greatest miracle of all. That the God who created us now dwells within us by his spirit. And our desire is for you and us, all of us together, to have a heart to heart with God. And we're just praying that the Holy Spirit leads us today um, for what God wants to minister to your heart, all of you that are watching. So let's get stuck in. What do we want to talk about today? Well, you, this program is not planned. Mm. Yeah, I can and actually God is a witness to confirm it. that. <laughs> so it's what only on Sunday at the last moment we pray, say, God, what message do you want to share with your people? Mm. It's not recorded. So we pray, we meditate, and inspiration again comes. I want to tell people that Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 45, that no one, can, Ruth can read it for us. Mm. John, chapter 6, verse 45. John 6, 45. Hmm. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. <laughs> Therefore, are... everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Do you hear that? Read it again. It I want every single person watching to listen to this scripture. That's why we are here today. Jesus is talking. Mm -hmm. It is written in the prophets, and mm -hmm. they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Mm -hmm. You shall be taught by who? By God. Not man. Man has the ability to teach. But the Holy Spirit teaches as he wills. Jesus said to the apostles before going to the cross in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 12, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when the Holy Spirit will come, he will guide you into the fullness of the truth. The Holy Spirit is called in the book of Job, chapter 32, verse 8, the spirit of understanding. In man, in you, in me, there is a spirit the breath of the Almighty give us spiritual understanding. No one can understand the Bible, the divine meaning, without the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask Saul, who became Paul, and he will tell you. No one can come to a point of spiritual knowledge without the help of the Holy Spirit. No one can come to spiritual understanding of the real meaning. That's why the Bible is warning every one of us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. No prophecy of the scripture came by the will of man. Moved by the Holy Spirit, holy man, holy prophet, spoke the message that came from heaven, that formed the library of this Bible. Mm. So, in as Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. He's the only inspired. He's the only one that can give you the right interpretation, the right meaning. That's why King Solomon, when he came to the throne, the prayer he's offered in First King chapter 3, verse 9, he asked God, I'm a child, I'm a small boy. Lord, help me. These people are big and very tough to rule. Give me wisdom, understanding heart, so I can do rightful judgment. And God was pleased for that and granting that. Right, so Holy Spirit is the teacher. He's in our midst today. So with open-minded, I believe that God is concerned about the state of the church today. I believe God is concerned about the state of our heart today. God is sitting on the throne of righteousness. Jesus is alive. Holy Spirit is alive. Nothing happens here on earth that God cannot see, he's not aware. The question in the book of Revelation, Jesus said <laughs> three, four times, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the spirit of God says mm. in the times where we are today. Mm. So after much praying, God is leading us to the special message of today about the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ <laughs> today. The mind of Christ. In the first podcast, the Lord brought the issue of focus. Mm. Last time we talked about pay attention to listen. And today we are talking about the mind of Christ. 
when you look at all these three, they are really connected. The question is, <laughs> what is the mind of Christ? What is our mind? Sometimes we say, ah, is it my thought? Is it God? And that's the battle we have been facing throughout the generation, the battle that will never end as long as we are on this earth. Mm, that doubt about whether, is it my thoughts or is it God speaking to me? Yes. There will be a constant battle in your heart, in your mind, in your conscience, between faith and doubt, between truth and lies. Should I? No, I should not. I love, I don't love. There's a constant battle going on through our mind. And that's what the Bible warns us in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Whom you submit yourself to obey. That is whose servant you are. Whose servant you are. Mm. We have to understand our mind, our conscience, our heart is the communication point mm. for the Holy Spirit as well as the spirit of Satan. Means there are two influences. Influences from the spirit of God and influences that come from the devil himself. Mm. But we have influence that comes from our natural circumstances around us. So what triggers the thought coming to my mind? Is it my circumstance? Is it God? Is it other people around me? Or is it Satan? As you can see, that's why we need to be led by the Holy Spirit in order to win the battle of thought, to capture our thought, to check ourselves. It's not every thought that crosses our mind that is from God. It can come from us. It can come from God. It can come from Satan. It can come from otherwise. We need to know to, to reach a level where we are mature enough to be able to distinguish where our thoughts come from. That's our desire for all of us, the students of the University of God, to be spiritually mature. And that is why... Um, okay. Yeah, it's actually on the back of our shirts. What's that? <laughs> you can read it if you want. Huh? Sense. Oh, sense knowledge. This is when, <laughs> when revelation comes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's all about when Jesus came and began to preach. Yeah, so hang on a minute. What does that mean? Sense knowledge ceases when revelation comes because we actually are talking about the University of God, going back to really the basics of what it's all about today. And that's why God led us to talk about the mind of Christ. Because what does it mean sense knowledge ceases when revelation comes? Sense knowledge is our natural way of thinking, our thoughts, our reasoning faculties. And revelation is from the Spirit of God. And revelation is the voice of God to our heart. And as we learned last time, last Sunday, God doesn't pipe us the mind. It's not that we are against sense knowledge or common sense. God gave us common sense. Mm. It's a gift from God. We often say, Prophet Vishal taught us, and, and everybody that says that spiritual growth is a function of obedience to God. Physical growth is a function of time. Intellectual growth is a function of learning. Whereas spiritual growth is a function of obedience to God. And that's the key. Intellectual growth and spiritual growth. Intellectual growth comes from learning. That's why we go to school, we go to university, to, to be instructed, to be taught. And we go to the things of the Spirit. Holy, Holy Spirit will teach us to have spiritual understanding, to grow in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only means of growth in our Christian life. Mm. The only means of growth, spiritual growth, is the spirit of God. That's why spiritual truth cannot be intellectually perceived or understood. And in many situations, we find out using our natural common sense to try to figure out the mind of Christ, the mind of God. And that's where we find ourselves in trouble, mm. giving wrong interpretation to what the scripture says, or coming with our own mind in prayer and begin to pull God to our mind rather than submitting to the mind of Christ. Let me explain. So before we go deeper, let's ask Ruth, what is the purpose of common sense? Why God give us common sense? So... Well, common sense actually protects us from different hazards or dangers that if we didn't have, we would fall into. Like it's common sense that tells us, okay, this is hot. I shouldn't burn 
I shouldn't drink it because it, I'll burn myself or I shouldn't touch this or I shouldn't go there. Um, we, it, to have a balanced mind. We, don't forget, I'm a human being just like you. God said we are spirit, soul, and body, right? Mm. God has created every human being on this earth to be able to relate with other human beings, to relate with the physical world, with our bodies, with our natural human faculties. So that's why God gave us these five senses to see, sight, hearing, smelling, taste, touch in order to control and to navigate the situation, the environment where we are living. Mm. There are some things we do naturally, we don't think about it, okay? You are sitting down all of a sudden, your body needs water. So, <laughs> your body will send a sense of thirst. And instinctively, automatically, you stop and go to grab a cup of water to drink. I take a cup of water, I go to the tap, I open it, but I will not just drink it. <laughs> I will look whether the thing is clean or not. And when I push it, I can smell it. If it smells funny, I will not put it in my mouth. Smell. Hmm? I taste it. If it tastes strange, I will never swallow it. I will spit it out. If it is fine, I swallow it. That's common sense. That's the faculties God gave us to navigate properly, safely in the environment where we live. So common sense help us to know what is relevant or not. Mm. Is that, we, we all, all say, hey, does it make sense? Ruth, this doesn't make sense. That's mm. common sense. A person, you listen to a person, what is he saying? It doesn't make sense to me. That's how common sense is action. Because we are moral person, intellectual person, and spiritual person. And that's what we're going to talk today. What is moral person? To know to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. Common sense to distinguish what is relevant or not, what makes sense or what does not make sense. Now the greatest problem we have is in the spiritual realm. If a message comes from God, how do we know that this is from God or not? Because sometimes a message from God will actually contradict common sense. Absolutely, but it is a... <laughs> Truth or reality of God. Mm. I think yeah, I could talk about the example we have last time. Maybe it's like a serve as introduction to this problem, to this message. We, we know our mind. We said that mind plays a great role, right? Mm. Because our situation... It's the gateway. It's the gateway. Mm. Means the first part, of, if somebody were to come to your house, at the gate first. Mean whatever happens first affects the mind here. You say, what is this? You begin to look, you begin to think, you begin to reason because of the situation on the ground. You try to assess it, to think it, to know what to do. What are the consequences? What are the, that's a human being for you. If I, somebody ring at my door and I have a camera, I look through it, and this person ringing at my gate, I don't know the person, I definitely not open my door to somebody I don't know. So how will you open a thought of revelation which you don't know? You say, hey, you, what does Jesus say? He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. What did they say? <laughs> they say, oh, come on, and say, what is he saying, this man? <laughs> what? Cannibal? <laughs> mm. We eat our flesh? This is hard. How can we? Everybody that followed Jesus that day in John chapter 6, go and read from verse 30 to 68, they left him. So many of them left him. I say, what is he saying? He who eats my flesh. How can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? This is hard. Because many of them were following Jesus because of the fame, because of the miracles, because it was something new, exciting. They thought he was going to overthrow the Romans. They had ideas about what they wanted Jesus to do. And when he started teaching these things, which seemed so difficult to understand with our sense knowledge... It was impossible without revelation to understand what Jesus was saying. And yet there was Jesus with them, who was the very word of God, to explain and interpret what he was saying. But they needed an open heart and humility and hunger for God's word to actually listen. That's why so many of them left and walked away. So common sense. Take things literally. Mm. So a believer who walks in the natural is no match to Satan. Mm. 
who walk in the natural, those who rely on the senses on this one. They took it literally the words of Jesus. And Jesus used parables for that purpose. If you take the parable of Jesus literally, you will not understand. You will drop your Bible. Jesus said, if your eye disturb you, plug it out. Will you do that, literally? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody gives you a slap here, do you give him a second one? You will not do it. Mean, there is a literal meaning and there is a spiritual meaning of things. Mm. We all know what he said to Nicodemus. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He... His common sense say, how is it possible? I can't the, enter back into my mother's womb. And be born again. And Jesus said, ah, you are a doctor of Israel and you don't know these things? He said, if I use earthly things and you don't believe, how would you believe when I talk about spiritual things? And Jesus said, in spirit, in truth, I'm telling you, unless a man is born again, mm. he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus continued. Unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. In another word, that which is natural is natural, that which is spiritual is spiritual. So, with spiritual things cannot be intellectually perceived. It is an erroneous assumption that spiritual things can be intellectually perceived, and that's the trouble we face when we go to the Bible in the letter. That's why we need to be humble, because if I rely on my own knowledge and read the Bible literally, I may interpret it according to my common sense. I may even say, no, this is not, this is not true. There's a problem here. There's a problem here. There's no problem in the Bible. There's a divine meaning hidden. If God opened your spiritual eyes, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, talk about spiritual knowledge, spiritual mm -hmm. understanding. So there's revelation knowledge, and there is sense, sense knowledge, knowledge mm -hmm. intellectual knowledge, carnal mind, carnally knowledge. Somebody can be, know the Bible by heart, quote all the verses, and literally interpret the Bible and pass the side of the real meaning of what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about now, our mind. So common sense is important. So something as, what is natural requires common sense. Mm -hmm. What is spiritual demands for spiritual insight. Jesus spoke about spiritual things, but he never neglected the natural. He always taught by the natural mm. and takes us gradually to the spirit. He met the Samaritan woman, we use as, as example, natural water, and then he took spiritual water. Mm. So when time we read the Bible, we should ask the Holy Spirit, help me to understand this. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 was reading the book of Isaiah, right? And he wanted to understand. He read in his mind, but he was wanted to understand. Something was disturbing him. He was saying in his heart, but who is the person talking? He was asking questions and nobody was here to help him. When he was trying to understand, so when you are reading, as we said, and you want to understand the meaning in humility, then you attract the Holy Spirit to come and help you, mm. to open your spiritual understanding. And then it's no longer your thoughts. The thoughts of God will begin to spring from your heart. Mm. So when God wanted to help him, God sent Philip. You see, Philip came and said to him, do you understand what you are reading? That's the first thing he said. The man said, how can I understand unless somebody help me? And this is now what I'm going to talk today. The work of the Holy Spirit begins in the understanding. What do I mean understanding? Spiritual understanding. That's what the Bible says, we shall be taught by God. Is that what it means then to have the mind of Christ? Absolutely. The Bible says, can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16? And we're going to take, we are going to take some example to illustrate what we are saying. But he who is spiritual judges all things, and yet hmm. he himself is rightly judged by no one. It's going to go to verse 14. Sorry. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, hmm. for they are foolishness to him, mm -hmm. nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Stop. The natural man is a man who relies on intellectual knowledge, carnal knowledge, our own mind, our own thinking. Mm -hmm. He cannot understand the things of the Spirit. Why? 
because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. Now, what is the difference between <laughs> sense knowledge, spiritual knowledge? What's the difference between now discernment? We talk about discernment and common sense. Common sense, you rely on the senses, what you see, what you hear, what your circumstances look like. And you take it by face value and you jump into a situation and begin to talk. Mm. You can be mistaken. Now, it takes discernment to look beyond the facts to find out the truth, the hidden truth. Because facts may change. What you see today may be different tomorrow. The question is now, when situation happens to our lives, mm. how do we react? Mm. Everybody has situation. There's no human being that does not have situation. Why? Because we are living in the world that is contradictory. Mm. We are living in circumstances that seems to be adverse. We see issues that violate our conscience every day. So, naturally, those things will affect your thought. How do you react to it? What is the right position? What's the right thinking? Do we say, what is God's opinion on the matter? Mm. We say, I want to know God's mind on the matter. Okay, let's take the example of this brother. I feel you, God be ushered naturally. Um, one of our brothers sent a prayer request. I remember. And his prayer request were having a serious issues concerning his eyes, his sight. Mm. And... Uh, According to the medical doctors that checked him, they said to him that the problem you have is a problem they cannot cure, cannot solve. It's kind of degeneration that will progressively lead you to total blindness. That's it, because there is no medical cure at that moment. So definitely, the doctor is suggesting to go through an operation to find a solution. But he was, he was reluctant because of fear. So when the prayer request came, say, ah, the doctor is telling me I should go for operations next month. What should I do? I'm not the one to tell you what you should do. <laughs> no human being should tell you what you should do. Your conscience will tell you the right thing to do. When they go to any hospital, anything, they will say, sign the form. They want you, you have to exercise your will. We exercise our will through our mind. That is discretion. Mean we are able through our common sense to discover, to see what is relevant or not. Should I sign or not sign? Does it make sense for me or not? So I told the brother, please, I'm going to pray over it. But I'm not rushed to pray. We need to know the mind of God in this matter. So I was praying, I was praying, I was praying. I didn't call to say, say be here. I pray, pray, pray. And while I was sitting praying on it, all of a sudden, something crossed my heart, my mind, not this one. Immediately, and the word was in French. Say, grève de corne, grève de corne. I say, ah, I was speaking in English, and the French word came to my heart. I say, grève de corne. <laughs> I quickly called Ruth. I say, Ruth, <laughs> how do you say? Remember, I say, Ruth, how do you say in English, grève de corne? So, mm -hmm. you tell, what did you tell me? Yeah, uh, grafted or transplanted cornea. Okay, so. That's what I heard in my heart. So when I, 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 I called a brother, I called him. He took the phone. I didn't tell him that you have to go to do this. And I asked him, my brother, did the doctor say that you have to go for cornea transplant? He said, yes, that's exactly what he said. I met him Friday. And he told me I need to do this. <laughs> but people are telling me, I should not do it. It's dangerous. I'll not do it. I'll not do it. Some give vision and dream that I should not go there. I should not do it. I should not do it. I ask you, what do you think about yourself about it? If revelation come from God and from different person, you too, you must have the revelation in order to act in faith. God give you a mind. God give you discretion, and God give you the Spirit of God to guide you into understanding. Whatever anybody can say for you should become a confirmation. So I was saying to the brother, to somebody, that if anyone comes with a revelation, he has a dream about you. Or somebody say, this is a prophecy about you. The Bible says clearly, you must have conviction in your heart about it. 
Romans chapter 14, verse 5. Whatever is not of conviction is sin and error. So if I have a revelation about you, don't act on what I said. Go and pray before God to give you the conviction that this is true for you. That is conviction. And I really believe God might be speaking to my brother, but sometimes we react emotionally to the situation and get afraid. Yeah, and fear can and block I, us. And I, and I don't know. You see, ah, many people tell me, they have dreamed, I should never go for oppression. I should not do it. If I go, it, that's the end. So I tell him, okay, if somebody say he has a dream about it and said, you know, go, did the person tell you the solution from God? He said, no. I say, okay, so what do you do? They say, we are praying. I say, why do you pray? He say, we pray because we believe it is spiritual. Okay, I say, my brother, you are a child of God. Yes, I'm a child of God, I'm saved. Can your body become an embodiment of Holy Spirit and at the same time, evil spirit? Say, no. Okay, affliction may come, true. But now, if somebody in the realm of prayer said, this is spiritual, that person should be able to pray against that spirit in the name of Jesus and cast it out and you get your free freedom. Why they couldn't do it? That's the question. God is not moved by our words. Why? Because God has his own way of implementing his will in our life, in our circumstances. If God wants me to go through this way, I follow his way. He chooses the way to follow. We choose how we go through it by faith. Daniel went through the lion den. God never saved him from the lion den, but God saved him when he entered there. God rescued him there. Mm, he came out stronger. Absolutely. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. God never prevented them from going to the furnace, but God get them there, protect them there. Means if you follow by faith the will of God, nothing will harm you. So why should we allow fear? Now, when you look at the situation, listen to the report of people are saying, he got afraid. I'm sure he's afraid. Sometimes our natural reason can stand against our faith. And we, we, we become overwhelmed. We can't reason well because of fear. Fear increases the size of our problem mentally. Fear breaks our focus on God. And fear prevents us from taking decision, action that could have saved our lives. So I told the brother, why am I praying for you? This is the word that comes to my heart. And I know that thought never came from my thoughts. The word came from my conscience, from my heart. And that's why I want you to break down for people. When you were praying, how did you know that that thought that came to your heart in French, those words that you heard, how did you know that was God speaking to you? That's what I tried to explain, that we have our natural mind here, my thinking, and we have another mind of the spirit called conscience. There are two minds, the natural mind, I think, and the mind of your spirit called conscience. The conscience is God's instrument for discernment. Mm -hmm. Ruth has read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, that spiritual things need to be spiritually discerned. Mm. When you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, 10, there's one gift of the Holy Ghost called discernment. Can we read? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to understand how much we need the Holy Spirit in our life. It's not utopia. It's not mental imagination. It's reality. First Corinthians chapter 12. We talk about discernment. Verse. Chapter from verse, four, from verse, from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 9. Read. You're going to see we start from verse 7. We read all the gift of the Spirit. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Mm hmm for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Good. Holy Spirit can give you words of wisdom. What is word of wisdom? You have a trouble, you don't know how to go about it. Your mind is troubled. People give their opinion. How do you do? How do you do? All of a sudden somebody say, this is a word. Everybody say, hey, that's true. Directed from the heart of God. Okay. 
when the Pharisees came to begin to uh, ask Jesus, uh, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They asked the question to Jesus, not because they wanted to know, but it was a trap. Because if Jesus say, you pay tax, they say, ha, this man is the Messiah, but he's a friend of the Romans to pay tax to them. If I say, you don't pay tax, they will go and accuse Jesus that ha, he's pushing people rebellious not to pay tax. Mm. So whatever question Jesus will use, they will use against him because they didn't want to know the truth. They wanted to trap him. Then Jesus said to them, okay, how do you pay your taxes? Which image is on the coin? They say Caesar. Jesus say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So what belongs to God? Jesus is saying, we must have a balanced life. Mm. We must maintain a balance between our responsibility to man and our responsibilities to God. Because God actually is the owner of our heart, our soul. I'm coming. This means there are things that are natural things, there are spiritual things. Mm. Jesus is saying, pay your attention to what is natural and pay attention to what is spiritual. There are different channels. But Jesus gave, that was the word of wisdom. When word of wisdom come, everybody, is, your enemy is paralyzed. There's no what to say. That's Holy Spirit words. That's the gift of word of wisdom. It gives a solution, a judgment that nobody can resist. It comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Continue. Wisdom. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, the word of knowledge through mm -hmm. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, gifts of healings mm -hmm. by the same Spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, the working of miracles. Mm -hmm. To another, prophecy. Mm -hmm. To another, discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirit. These gifts are too many. We got given the grace. We we'll talk talk about it one by one, because we made a lot of confusion about these issues. But discernment, mm -hmm. discernment. Somebody just was asking us a question recently. Say, ah, you mentioned Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9, that I see, I cannot perceive. That is this. There's a difference between to see and to perceive. We we'll talked about it last time. That means you can hear with your physical ears, but, but you don't understand. Are you actually hearing spiritually. That's where the Holy Spirit will come. When revelation comes to you, something comes from here, it's from God. Mm. We try to use our carnal mind to judge see what comes here. That's why sometimes we are confused between dreams and visions. You can have dreams that come from the inflow of your mind, and you can have vision that come from God. Vision is from your spirit, from your heart. So when vision comes, how do we know this is from God? Because there are two channels. This one and this one are different, but they can operate simultaneously. So when you were praying about the case of this brother and then those, those words came to your heart, yes, you, the, you automatically knew that, oh, this is God, because it wasn't coming from your, your something you've been thinking about. Because I, and it came instantly. What I want to say, I was thinking about the brother. There was no process. I was thinking about the brother, what you were doing. I, while I was thinking, all of a sudden, at the same time, this thing came simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you think, you can only think one thing at a time. Mm. But while I was praying, thinking deep, thinking deep, thinking deep, all of a sudden the, the, the voice came. Ah. So there are two channels. One day I remember it was in the emergency. The prophet, Yeshua, was praying and said, was talking to somebody and praying at the same time. He said, there are two channels. It's your divine nature. Your spirit is the one that receives revelation from God. Your body and your mind are connected to the earth. That's sense knowledge. But your spirit and your conscious is connected to God. There are two beings in you, natural being and spiritual being. Your, in, your soul and your spirit, the, your spiritual side of you. And that is where the problem is. Your spiritual side, your conscious, is the one that discerns, that perceives beyond the veil of the flesh, of the mind, what comes from God. And that thing does not happen overnight. You have to practice it. Mm. That's why the prophet gave you the faith blessed and meditate. The more you meditate about what you have read in the Bible to understand it, you want to understand. You begin to ask Holy Spirit, help me. That's what I do when I pray for people. As I said, I'm saying, I, I was praying to God to help me because I cannot see this on the natural. And all of a sudden, the thing came. And he, that's the help of Holy Spirit. Like the way this morning the message came. Like this morning. I, I told Ruth, what are you going to say to Ruth? I don't know. I trust the Holy Spirit. We don't have any message program. There's no paper. 
Yes, they have. We don't know what to say. We trust God. I believe that tomorrow morning, before we come, God, we pray, God be inspired what to say to his people. And the message came in the morning at 8. I said, Ruth, this is what God put in my heart to discuss with the people of God today. And that is it. If we trust the Holy Spirit, if we trust God, and you are sensitive, you can perceive his mind. Mm. We have sense knowledge, and we have what we call sense of righteousness. Sense knowledge is connected to your brain, what you see, what you hear. That's, that's connected to common sense, right? Absolutely, that's that common sense. That will measure that, okay, this thing is, is not common sense to do this or that. Mm -hmm. What you see, what you hear, what second will be like. So does that mean the but, sense of righteousness spiritually performs that function? Uh, absolutely. To but check things in the spirit. That's where Holy Spirit will come into your help. We call it the helper from above. Jesus said, the spirit of truth, mm. the helper from above. He's the one that will give you that revelation. He will not interpret the dreams for you. He will not tell you what the dream means, not human beings. Nobody can interpret spiritual things by, the reason, by reason of mind. There's no mathematical logic for that. It is spiritually perceived. So I'm, when I told the brother, I said, I didn't pray for him. I cannot say something that's contrary to the will of God. Me, I believe God wants him to do it. I said, this is the message that God is telling me. Mm. That <laughs> uh, this corner grave will have to take place. Mm. I said, don't be afraid. If you go to do that thing, I will be on my knee to pray. I will pray for you, and I will pray for the doctor. <laughs> I will pray for you for the operation to take place properly. That God will and, use the doctor's hands. And I will pray that that transplant will work. Your body will not reject it. Because sometimes your body can reject it. So, doctor is helping you according to his knowledge. So I'm praying for God to guide the doctor to do what is right and to help you. God can use anybody to help you, bring solution to you. I remember one case that happened in, when I was with the prophet in the church. There was one man. He was a policeman. He was guarding a bank. Armed robbers came and attacked the bank. And he received a bullet in his stomach. And the intestines came out. Mm. So he went to the hospital. The operation was not done properly. So they had to put a, a pipe or something here, a porch to, to uh, urinate, whatever. When he came to the church that day, the prophet said, do you have any doctors here or specialists here? And I remember, many of you know, two people came, one doctor and one professor. They, they checked, they said, yes. Ah, they, they, if there was a problem, the way the operation was handled. What did the prophet do? We raise money. Mm. The church buy the ticket, send the man to India, send him to a specialist, and they operate the man and put everything right. When the man came back, he was fine. There's a difference between healing and miracles, and we don't know the difference of it. If you have a vehicle and you have a spare part that is defective, they say, ah, we can repair this spare part. They repair it and put it back. Healing is a process. But miracle is different from healing. It means you, you need completely a new thing, a recreated thing. That's a miracle. Lazarus' resurrection was a miracle. A person that's completely blind is not healing. It's a miracle. If somebody some, it has flu, go through a process and get healed. We need to understand those gifts the Holy Ghost is talking about. By the grace of God, we talk about this. But today I'm talking about something special. I was saying to the man, I pray this is what God said to my heart. He was expecting spiritual thing. Pray for me. But God said, this is the answer. <laughs> so I told him, look, my brother, this is what comes to my spirit. And I, tell, I have to tell you the truth. I'm going to lie to you. So please go and pray and fast every Wednesday. Go and ask God to tell you what you should do about it. Don't go by what I said. You must have a conviction. The Bible says you must test everything said about you. Test the prophecy, test the thought to know they are from God or not. So that he himself would have a personal conviction Abs that yes, yes, this is from God. If not, there's no faith. And that is what we want everyone to be in that position, you know, for everyone to be spiritually mature. That anything anyone tells you is just a confirmation of what God has already communicated to your spirit. But the question is, 
Are you perceiving the voice of God? Are you hearing the voice of God? Are you identifying that voice? And that is why we're breaking this down for all of us today, because this is essential to our lives as believers. I'm not saying you should reject what people say. I'm saying the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, test the spirit mm. to know what is from God or not. If somebody tells you this, collect it, don't reject it, and pray over it, depending on God to give you his mind. Oh, no, that's the mind of Christ. And that when the mind of Christ comes, you have peace of heart. Thank you. That's what we call independent mind. You must have an independent mind. Independent mind is a mind that is determined to find out the truth from God's point of view. Mm. You don't take what you hear, but you read and come to a hasty mm -hmm. conclusion. Mm -hmm. Independent mind is somebody who wants to examine everything in the light of God's word to know the truth. Mm. Nicodemus heard so many things against Jesus. He did. Mm. But he came in the night to find out the truth from Jesus. And Jesus spoke to him and he understood the truth and his life was changed. Not everybody that speaks something is speaking from God. So what you need to do, you have a role to play. What is your role? Maturity. What is maturity? Engage your heart. Ask God, who is this man? Ask God. What should I do? And if truly you have that relation with God, you will realize that God has revealed that thing to the heart of the man. But because of what people say or fear, you refuse to do the right thing. God chooses what we go through. We choose how we go through it. The right, nobody can apply knowledge, revelation, without being led by the Holy Spirit. Can you so, hmm? break down the area of the sense of righteousness? Okay. Because um, I think that's really helpful for okay. people to understand. Okay. Let's, do, okay, let's go to the book of Daniel. Then we mm -hmm. thank you for, for, for reminding me that. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Prophet Daniel. Then we distinguish that sense of righteousness we are talking about. Sense of righteousness is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Something happened. One day, the King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And uh, Daniel chapter 2. Maybe you can no, read. You go for it. Because your, your accent is more beautiful. Uh, than no. Mine. People want to hear from you. <laughs> okay, okay, please. <laughs> now, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. But his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. This is what everybody faces. Hmm. He had a dream or a situation. Hmm. And what, what happened? They said his spirit, his heart was troubled. Hmm. And his sleep left him. Sometimes you have situation. You think so much about it. Your heart is troubled. Your mind is troubled and you become sleepless. You can't sleep at night. He was disturbed. Why? Hmm. Because he didn't understand the dream. Hmm. He was lost. Now, what did he do? Let me continue. Then the king gave the commands to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the, the king his dream. So they came and stood before him. Verse 3, and the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. I mean to understand the dream. Verse 4. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give you the interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> they said to the king, tell us the dream, and we'll tell you the meaning. Nebuchadnezzar know the people are lying. He said, if I tell you the dream, you will give me an interpretation. How will I know that what you are saying is from God or not? So he decided to test them. So he has, a, yes. So, How well, I, if you're really from God, then you will tell me the dream in the first place. You say that you have been telling me lies, lies, lies. But something will tell him that. No, the only way I can trust you is for you to tell me my dream. If you are able to tell me my dream, then I will believe the interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> That's wisdom. Look, you must, before you have wisdom, you must have knowledge and understanding. Mm. To be understood is to understand. If I understand something, I will be able to explain it to people. 
and they will understand it and will impart that knowledge. But the king did not trust them. The king said, okay, if this message is from God, how can you interpret something from God if you don't hear from God? Let God speak to you. That's what he's saying. Mm. So what did he answer? What was the answer to the, to the saying? He said, mm -hmm. And the king said to them, okay, the king answered and said to the child, Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made an ash heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards and great <clears throat> honor. <clears throat> Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will give its interpretation. You see, they say the same thing again. Now, verse 10, they say something. The children answered the king and said, There is not a man on this earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such thing to any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. Look, we have people that have divination spirit. Sangoma. Mm. We have Balam, Balaam. So many people by the spirit of divination can see things in the spirit, but they cannot bring any solution or understand it. They can see, but there's no solution. But in this case, they said, nobody, nobody can hear what comes from God himself. They even said... Without the spirit of God. Exactly. They, they even said, um, there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with the flesh. That, because... God does not dwell in the flesh for them because mm. they do incantation. But in the New Testament, God dwells in our heart through the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that's what I said at the beginning. That's the greatest miracle of all, that the God who created us dwells that's, within us. That's the sense of righteousness. That's the answer to your question. Okay, that's the sense of when righteousness. When the Holy Spirit comes into your heart Are you and dwells into down? your spirit, he will give you the mind of Christ. He will begin to speak to you and reveal to you to walk in the spirit. That's the meaning. When the Holy Ghost comes and dwells within you, you have the Bible called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hmm. It's a gift. When the gift of righteousness comes, he begins to manifest his strength in your weaknesses. It's not your work. It's not you. Hmm. He will begin to manifest this gift of the spirit we just read. Among them, discerning of spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Holy Spirit will begin to speak prophecy. Holy Spirit will give you vision. He will speak to you. He will give you interpretation in your heart. That's what we call the sense of righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. By the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, discernment come. Discernment. Discernment means God will give you the knowledge of spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Now, to go to Matthew chapter 13. Or you want Verse to finish 13. the issue of Daniel? Yes, I'm coming. Just, I just want to illustrate something come back. Matthew okay. 13, verse 13, to what Jesus said. Because it's the Old Testament. I'm coming to the New Testament. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 13? Start from verse 11 to 13. What Jesus said to his apostles. Discernment. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. But to them... Wait. It has given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Mystery can never be known by intellectually. It takes discernment, revelation. Discernment means revelation because it's the mystery. So that's what it means when we say sense, knowledge ceases when... When revelation comes. The things of God require revelation to know them, discerning of the Spirit by the Spirit of God. That's the mystery of the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus spoke in parable, but the disciples knew exactly the divine meaning of Jesus' words. So as a disciple of Jesus, it has been given to you to unravel the mystery. And how do we do that? Through the spirit of righteousness, which is inside us, the Holy Spirit himself. Before we go back to Daniel, Jesus said, who eats my flesh and drink my blood as eternal life. And they abandoned him. They were just looking for miracle, but they couldn't understand the word. Jesus turned to his disciples, say, you, what are you waiting for to go? Peter looked at him and Peter said, said, where will we go? You, have, you alone have the words of eternal you life. You have the words of eternal life. Mm. Peter knew that the word Jesus was speaking as spirit and life. And Jesus said, yes, the word I speak to you as spirit and life. The letter profits for nothing, but the spirit gives life. What is Jesus saying? Intellectual meaning of this word is dead. 
Mm-hmm. It takes the Holy Ghost to give the real meaning of what the Bible says. And that's where real knowledge comes, real faith comes, sense of righteousness comes. When you are moved by the Holy Spirit, you will see what Jesus says. You will hear what God hears. You have spiritual understanding. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, to verse 6, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life, life and, peace. and peace. How can you be spiritually minded? When verse 9. You have the mind of Christ. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, mm. Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. Mm. You understand what I said now? The mind of Christ is meant for those who have the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. He's our helper. He will tell you things to come. He will tell you the real meaning. He will teach you and guide you. So in the same way that our common sense will check things that we see and perceive naturally, the sense of righteousness within us, which is the Holy Spirit, will check and discern things that we perceive spiritually. You will be able to see the other side. Then you will see the other world, the spiritual realm, what's happening in God's dimension. You will be able to see it. So when you heard that voice in your heart about that situation, it was the Holy Spirit inside of you which brought to your understanding, this is what God Look, says about I ne- the man. I, I never doubted. I knew it was him. Mm-hmm. And I took my phone and I told the brother, did the doctor say that you have to go in for coronary transplant? He said, yes, I just come Friday. And that's what the doctor said, exactly. Holy Spirit knows all things. So... That is the point of God we need to know in our life. That's maturity. That's grace. And there's nothing exceptional. It's a gift from God. It is meant for you. That's why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to walk in the Spirit. We read Galatians. If you're in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. That's just walk in the Spirit is to be led by discernment. Mm. If it was not possible, God would not would ask you. God wouldn't have asked you to walk in the Spirit if, if he has not designed, designed you, you to walk in the Spirit. God would never ask you to walk in the spirit if he has not built you to walk in the spirit, in your spirit, through your conscience. But you have a role to play. Your attention matters. Today we go what people say. We quote the scriptures, we quote letters, we quote mind of God. But we don't have any spiritual understanding of what we are saying. That's why it's difficult for us to apply it to our lives and to live by it because we're still very much governed by the senses. And it's only when, you know, faith you know, is, is above the senses. No. It's the, when the spirit conquers our senses. That's why our beloved prophet T.B. Yosha said, <laughs> faith comes when the word prevails, prevails over, over the sense. thinking processes. Yeah. You have heard this message so time, we need to understand what he says. Faith comes when the word prevails over the thinking processes. Why you are thinking with your own mind? When the Holy Ghost comes and gives you the living word, the inwardly received truth in your heart. What I received for me was the inwardly received truth from the Holy Ghost that this is what God chooses to go. Mm. And faith starts. Conviction comes from your spirit, from your heart, not from your brain, from here. Mm. No one can apply this word of God without the help of Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the only means of growth in our spiritual life is the Holy Spirit. We need to know who he is. He's God. We talk about power. Let's stop talking about power. Talk about righteousness. That's why he comes. He comes to make you a child of God. He comes to help you to receive revelation and understanding from God so you can walk as a child of God here on this earth. The scriptures say, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. What is our victory? You believe Jesus is the Son of God. When you believe Jesus rightfully, you have the Spirit of God leading you, guiding you to walk in the Spirit, led by revelation, led by intimation, suggestions from the Spirit. If now you are entering a bus and the Spirit of God knows the accident is coming, you will say, hey, don't enter, don't enter. If you recognize that voice, you will never enter and save yourself. But if you refuse to recognize, you enter. Until trouble come, when we call Nigeria Wahala, trouble come. You say, hey, I heard this before. Sometimes we are stubborn to the spirit. That's what Stephen said in Acts chapter 7, verse 56. He say, you Pharisee, stubborn, you always resist the Holy Spirit. We told you, 
Stubbornness is to continue to do what is not right before God or mm. failing to do what is right. And while determination is to do what is right. When the Holy Spirit gives you something, it's, you must be determined to apply it and you will see the result. Mm, because when you were talking at the beginning about, you know, there's no neutral kingdom, either, you know, we can be used by the Spirit of God or we can be used by the Spirit of, of Satan. You know, when we resist the Holy Spirit, you know, it, which is the spirit that's causing us to resist the Holy Spirit? Definitely it's not the spirit of God. So that's why we, we should not be tossed and turned around. We should know that, okay, I'm, I'm a believer. I know my rights in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the one guiding my life. So we don't fall into the temptation to actually just resist the spirit and be a stumbling block for others and ourselves. We are called to resist Satan, the liar, mm. but to submit to the Holy Spirit. The only spirit we should resist is the spirit of Satan. He is a lying spirit. James chapter 4 verse 7. He said, submit to God and resist the devil. This is what you forget. You have to submit to God first. First, submit to the Holy Spirit, his revelation, his self-righteousness, and his, his sense of righteousness of the Holy Ghost. Then you'll be able to know what is from God and not from God. When you yield your heart, your mind to the control of the Holy Spirit with the mind of Christ, he will tell you this is not from God. This is from the devil and you will know. Satan can quote the scripture as we said last time. Without it, any understanding. Without any life of the Spirit. Mm. The time to go to, this is the University of the Holy Spirit. The College of God is the one. Spiritual maturity requires to obey and walk with the Spirit of God. Our earthly understanding must give way to spiritual understanding to come to maturity of faith and walk with the Spirit of Father. It's not mental imagination. It's truth. The Bible is true. If this Bible is just a letter, you say it's intellectual. Mm. But when we don't know, it's meditation to ask Holy Ghost to come and help you. That's the purpose of meditation. Between this one and this one, that's the work of meditation. When you're having trouble, one day my brother said, ah, well, how can I... Meditate when I have negative thoughts all the time. But that's when you should meditate. Because the devil is bombarding you with negative because thoughts. Because you're combating it in, this, in that spiritual so warfare. What, thank you. In that way, you submit to God by meditation. You submit your heart to the Holy Spirit. Mm. Help me, Lord, in the midst of trouble. In your heart, help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In your heart, before you realize it, a word will cross your heart. Mm. If, you, if you know to identify the two sources, you will not make any mistake in your life anymore. You will not doubt anymore. When you know what comes here, faith comes from your spirit. Revelation is from your spirit. Spiritual understanding comes from your spirit. Conviction is your spirit. Belief is your heart. Faith is your heart. You will never doubt. You will follow the voice of God in your heart by conviction. Mm. No matter what the whole world said about you, you believe what God put in your heart here. And that's the difference in your life. God has given us common sense for natural things, to know what is relevant, and God has given us spiritual sense, God, sense of righteousness in Christ Jesus. That's why we have the mind of Christ. The question is, to come to the knowledge of that, you, not, you must be taught by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit must teach you, John chapter 6, verse 45. He's the one that will give you understanding. He's the one who will teach you. We talk about Daniel, right? We didn't finish. Let's go back to Daniel because we, you know, we are coming to the conclusion. We're getting so excited about this. Let's go to Daniel. Okay, Daniel 2. So we were, it was the area of uh, the they say, witch doctors were basically telling... Witch doctors say nobody can do it unless you have the God yeah. inside and God does not do it in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost in our heart when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That's the gift of righteousness of mm -hmm. God in our heart to help us discern spiritual things. Now, when Daniel was brought before the king, the king said, I'm going to kill everybody. But Daniel said, king, give me time. That's what Daniel said. Give me, he went to meet Ariok and say, ask the king to give me time to pray. Mm. This is what we have to do. No matter the situation you have, no matter the thoughts bombarding you, Nobody, the words you hear from any person, including me talking to you. Do, do, do what Daniel did. He went to the secret place and prayed to God for revelation. 
You say, God, this man called us and say this. Don't be rushed by any Lord, natural emergency. You, what are you saying? Yeah. He's your father. Mm. Daniel went and prayed. And the Bible said in the night, God spoke to him, gave him a vision. Vision, vision, vision. Vision is from your spirit. And immediately, Daniel knew that this is the dream the king has that God revealed to him. Mm. In Acts chapter 16, verse 9, it was vision that revealed to Paul the Macedonia, and he went to Macedonia. They were led by the spirit by vision. Daniel came to the king and said, oh king, I'm going to tell you your dream. Not only that, I will tell you the meaning of your dream. Mm. Daniel was complete. Daniel came and said, oh king, you saw a, a statue, as you explained to you. Mm. You go and read in Daniel 2 for because of time. He described the vision, the head of gold. Mm. He explained the, uh, the, the silver, the, the bronze, the iron, and the clay. You say, this is what you see. And I will tell you the meaning of this. The head of bronze is you. After you, another kingdom will come. Daniel was able to tell the dream and give him the interpretation of the dream. Mm. Because Daniel had what we call understanding, spiritual understanding from God. He spoke the mind of God to the king. The king fell on his knees and began to worship him. He said, no, it's God. And acknowledge this is God that revealed the secrets of heart mm, through the God mind of heaven Christ. Who reveals mysteries and secrets of the hearts. So please, if we believe this Bible, the Bible says, you go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Please, before you go to bed, read the full chapter 2. Mm. It's either you believe this Bible is literature for you, it has no meaning, and then you remain sense of knowledge, or you begin to meditate, to cry to God. Bro, God give, give grace to the humble and raises the pride. What do I mean by that? Only a humble person can learn from the Holy Spirit. Mm. If I come say, I know, I know, I know, he will leave you. But if you say, Lord, I don't know nothing, help me. I want to understand. I want to understand. If he says humility and you want to understand for salvation's sake, understand it will come. When I came to this prophet, I could not understand anything. I've never heard him teach. Let me tell you one example. Ruth, I'm sorry. You know, the prophet used to write this language tongue. Mm. People say writing those things. When I came, I say, how can this be? I don't reject what I don't know at first. I will go to God to ask for help. If you don't understand something, don't reject it. Go and ask God till you come to understanding. Many rejected Jesus. Mm. Many rejected him, Prophet Yosha, because they see him on the outside. Why can't you go and ask God and go tell you, who is this man? Why can't you ask God, who is this Jesus? John chapter 7, verse 12, they say, Jesus, some say he's good, some say he deceived people. So I asked my God, what's the meaning of this thing he's writing? While I was thinking, thinking, all of a sudden, <laughs> all this, the thought came to Daniel, the same Daniel. Some people say, do you know what happened to Belshazzar? I went to the book. Of, I was meditating in the church. I ran to the book of Daniel. There was King Belshazzar took the instrument of the temple to Babylon. And one day he was doing a feast. Instead of taking the cup of wine, he took the instrument in the temple of God to drink wine with it. While they were feasting, feasting, all of a sudden he saw a hand writing on the wall a word. The king saw the hand and this began to shake with fear. When things come from God, your heart will shake. The man said, what is this? Nobody was able to read the scriptures. Nobody. The same Daniel came. And God, with his sense of righteousness, was able to read what the angel wrote. Angelic word, angelic tongues, angelic writings. He said, many, many tekel opasim. You have been counted divided, divided and found lacking. And he explained to him the meaning. Mm. We have tongues, interpretation of tongues. That's the same Holy Spirit. When I saw Lord, I say, my God, this is true. So don't be too right to reject things. Go to God and ask God, who is Jesus to you? Who is God to you? What does the Bible mean to you? Is it literature? Is it true? When you are weak, that's when you have chance to know. God give grace to the weak. 
When you say, I'm, I'm not going to theology, so I don't understand nothing, that's when God will help you. When I say, God, I don't know nothing, help me, sense knowledge will go. Revelation will come. Saul, we all know, who persecuted the church so many years. Mm. One day, Jesus revealed himself to him, and the wolf became a lamb. Go and read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Ignorance lead people to do many mistakes. But we need to have spiritual enlightenment by the Holy Ghost revelation in our heart to discern the truth from God. That is discerning. That's what we need to know what is from God, what is not from God. There's no formula. There's no shortcut. You have to go to the Holy Ghost and develop your relationship with him every day by prayer and meditation. This Bible is the word of God. If you treasure this Bible, you do what the Ethiopian eunuch did in Acts chapter 8, Read and ask Holy Ghost to help you with the mind of Christ. God's opinion can come to your heart because he loves you. God does not want us to die. God does not want you to make a mistake. So when you ask your dad, when you ask your father, Holy Ghost will lead you and will guide you if you trust in him. So it's not theory, it's practical. Can we show that video with our brother? Hmm? I want to show you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to show one video where one, one man was praying for during the, yeah, this, this brother. I was here and he was in Asia. I'm here in Europe, 20,000 kilometers between this man and me. So he's in the church and I saw he, he have a placard. It's written uh, digestion problem, stomach acid, and what's again, heart and lungs, something like that. So this is what he wrote to Jesus. Mm -hmm. This was his problem. This was his worries. So he came to the prayer line. I was not there to see him. There was no contact between him and me. Only God can do this. Me, I cannot. I'm a human being. I'm here physically. I cannot be here and be 12,000 kilometers. I, my faith in Christ, and I believe in Jesus, and I pray here to, in this board, and I touch this board to pray for him. Just listen. Be free in the name of Jesus. Stop. Stop. Now, as I pray, something, something is disturbing this brother. It's not this what you wrote in your placard. And I want you to know what it is. In my heart, while I'm praying, I'm asking God to help me. God knew that I wanted you to know. How can I pray for somebody if I don't know what's going on? If, you know, sometimes we don't go, God never go by what you're saying in your, in your, in your petition. Mm. God see the real problem in you. Or... God may grant you a petition, and you may forget something which is worse than what you're asking for. God will give you what you have not asked because he's merciful. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Bible says. Let's continue. So while I was praying for the man, I stretched my hand, praying in my heart, a message came. His teeth, his teeth, his teeth, the same message came to my heart. And I know it was from here, not from here. And I never doubt it because I know this one is from God, not me. When your heart is engaged with him, you will discern when the voice comes by the conviction in your heart that this is what God say. And I say, tell this man, you should take care of his teeth very well. And that's the problem he had. He never wrote in his placard, but that's another problem God wants to heal him for. Let's continue. Stop now. I have no human capacity to know that. It's not written nowhere. Nothing so bad had this. But that thing came to my heart, and I know this is from God. This is what we call the mind of Christ. It's not something extraordinary. It's supposed to be in the life of every child of God. It's not something 
is supernatural, but God wanted you to have the same thing. So when you come to bring a problem, the same mind that came to me can tell you this is the answer. And you will discern the Holy Spirit intimation in your heart. It's reality. So I never doubted. And I tell you, this is what I saw. And he confirmed it. And I never knew him. I never met him. He was 12,000 kilometers from me. No eye contact, no physical contact. But Holy Spirit is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. So being a Christian is more than just religious. It's a living relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. And he's now mixed through the person of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. That when we believe Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have the very presence of God in our heart through the person of the Holy Spirit. And when it comes to your life, it's to give you godly character, the fruit of the Spirit, at the same time, lead you in prayer. This is what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 8. We don't know what to pray. Holy Spirit, help us in our weaknesses according to the mind of the Spirit. That is the mind of Christ. So, if you know him, if you develop your relationship with him as your father, he will put your mind, your heart, a message. But if this mind is so overwhelmed, how will you discern the thought? You will say, no, it's not for me. And you bypass it. But as you have the message from God. Mm. Can, you, can you go to Job chapter 33, verse 14? And we conclude over there and we pray. Job chapter 33 from verse 14. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Don't you see? God speak in one way or another to all, of, to all of us, but we don't perceive it. Why? Because lack of sense of righteousness. To perceive is discerning, and you can only discern when you ask Holy Spirit to help you. If you ask your dream, your vision to him, he will help you. Go and read Acts chapter 9 when Peter had a dream, you cannot understand. He was thinking and praying. While he was thinking about it, Holy Spirit came and spoke to him clearly, and he understood. He went to the house of Cornelius. Is that why it says in the book of Isaiah, you can be ever hearing but not Thank you. understanding? You, you can be hearing and not understanding. Why? Because of Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 20 to 22. And then we pray. Listen to Jesus. Matthew 6. From verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, mm -hmm. where neither moth nor rust destroys, mm. and where thieves do not break in and steal. Mm. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Focus. Continue. The lamp of the body is the eye. The lamp of your body is your eye. Let me explain. Sense knowledge. When this eye you see clearly, you would never hit your body in the wall nor enter a hole because you can see where to go. Continue. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Your body full of light because you know where to turn your body. You know where to turn your car. You don't hit the wall, you turn the, take the right direction. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. It means you can fall inside the hole. If, therefore, the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? If the light in you is darkness, have you asked yourself, how can the light be, be darkness? Because you think it's light, whereas it's actually darkness. I mean, sense and knowledge look like light. It's not light, it's darkness. I mean, you cannot understand spiritual things with your re reasons. Mm. The and, letter if you, kills. and if you think that it's light, but it's it not. It's darkness. If you think that you're in the light, but you're in the dark, you don't know you need the light. That's why Jesus said, for two judgments I came. The blind can see, and those who can see remain blind. So if you know you need the light of God, if you know that you're in spiritual darkness without the light and revelation of God, then you can ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten your mind with spiritual things. But if you think already that you know everything spiritually, that you, you, you have the light, everything around you, what does the Bible say? How great is that darkness? That's exactly what the Pharisees did. Mm. They think they knew more than Jesus and met Jesus 
and say, hey, you, you are testifying about yourself. Jesus said, if I give testimony, my testimony is true. John chapter 8. Jesus said, you don't know where I come from, where I go. You are from this earth. I'm from above. That's what Jesus said. That's why I think we just need to guard against the temptation to be so uh, re religious, not spiritual. What do I mean by that? Doctrines and the commandments of men rather than adhering to the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And that can be a, a huge temptation for every single one of us. So... But I want to say, we are not against religion. No. What we are saying that the letter is the starting point, but you need to look beyond the letter to see the spirit of the letter. Mm. It has a meaning. Means, when we don't have Holy Spirit, we just do rituals. But when we have Holy Spirit, it becomes life. That's why Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the ministry of the spirit, not of the letter. Mm. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Mm. So please, Jesus wants us to have spiritual insight into revealed truth led by his spirit. Mm. So let us pray. Mm. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your message today. You say, he who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit says. Holy Spirit, you are the light. Enter our heart, enter our mind, enter our life at every point, Lord. The Bible says when you come, you will show us things we do not know. Revelation will come. Lead them, Lord, I pray. For every single brother and sister reading, they want to know you. They want to perceive your thoughts and the mind of Christ. I pray manifest your strength in their weaknesses, Lord. Manifest your strength in their spirit, in their mind, in their conscience. And bring revelation in the name of Jesus. Speak to their heart. Speak to their mind. Bring conviction. Bring revelation. Act in them, Lord. When they read to understand that revelation comes from heart. Give them the grace, the strength to discern your voice in the secret place of their heart with faith and conviction in the name of Jesus. The gift of eyes that can see and perceive. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 12 says, the gift of eyes that can see and perceive. Ears that can hear and understand is a gift from God. Father, give them the gift of righteousness to hear, to see what you see, to know what you know, to discern your ways and to walk led by your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 The Lord be with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much for joining us on today's Heart to Heart with God. And please rewatch it, write down notes, um, meditate over the hidden truths in this message, because this message is from the Spirit of God. It's Him speaking to you through us. So please make sure that you write it down, meditate over it, go over it again and again. And if you have any questions, you can send them to us. Also, we just want to take a moment again, um, because so many people are asking us, how can they share their testimony? So you can actually go to the UOG website. Um, I believe if you're not already familiar with it, then take a moment to get familiar with the website. It's a wonderful website, um, the UOG.org. And you can go there and you can see actually on the screen now where it says um, you go to the contact section and you it's also on the home page. You can click where it says testimony and then you can fill in the testimony form. Now, this testimony form um, actually we're in the process. It's very soon. It's actually going to be visible on the website, meaning that when you submit your testimony with any pictures um, or attachments, it will actually be visible for people to read and to be blessed by as well. So please share your testimony. Remember, we overcome with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So yeah, be an overcomer and share your testimony. We're saying this because so many people write to us and say, I have a testimony, how do I share it? So this is what um, we have actually done for you. So send us the form and very soon in the next week, I believe, um, everything is actually going to be visible and published on the UOG website. And you will see your own testimony there as a student of the University of God so you can bless others. Also, um, we want to take a moment for those of you who are not familiar with racinebusso.com. Yes, now you might say, hang on a minute, Racine Busso, is, is he not University of God? Well, what's going on? Why do you have another website? Well, 
as we said in the beginning, you know, when we shared our vision, um, it is in stages, it is in phases. And we literally have been following the Spirit of God for each of the phases of this vision. You know, we started off just with online teaching, pre-recorded messages, and then we um, did the interactive question and answer sessions, God, God's voice through his word, the journey through the Bible series, the foundation series, the step into the spiritual series. Then God um, gave us the, the grace to have our own app, which if you've not subscribed to the app, please do so. Um, so many people ask us, how can they be mentored? Well, actually, joining the app is a way for you to do that. Let me explain why. When you're a member of the household of faith, you can actually have access to um, a different content and actually also have um, Zoom meetings with us where we can actually share leadership secrets and more about our, our, our heart and what we learned all through the years of our mentorship training with Prophet TB Joshua under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And remember, um, in the vision as well, it was to bless the body of Christ, to be led as the Spirit leads, to bless with spiritual gifts. And we saw that um, starting when God released Racine to minister interactive prayer with GDS Church in Jakarta. And that was just the beginning. Uh, I believe you'll see a lot more of that coming up different interactions with different churches. So if you are a minister of God or you have a church, a ministry, and you want to build a relationship with God's servant, Racine Busso, then you can do that. So you, you can go to the website. You can see it here. Um, it's just a very simple form. Please tell us what it is that God has put in your heart that you want Racine to help with or you want the UOG ministry to help with. Is it a live event, an interactive event, a mentorship event, coming to your country, your church. Just write it out what God has put in your heart, that you, how you want to be involved, how you want to build your relationship with, with us and with Racine. And remember, we'll put everything in prayer. And where God says go, we go. And that is how we've been led and that is how we are being led. So thank you so much for being part of this big family the University of God. And also people keep asking, how can I get the t-shirts? How can I get the, yeah, like many people have asked us that. So don't worry. I believe um, that will be something in the coming months as well that will be available for you. So watch this space. God bless you. And more importantly, God bless your spirit. The Lord be with your spirit in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit will come and help you. Don't worry. It's start by thinking. At the time of thinking, he will come and rescue you and help you and speak to your heart. And as you grow with him, you will begin to discern his voice. He loves us. He wants us to know him and discern the voice of the shepherd. Jesus said, my sheep shall hear my voice. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with your spirit.